Welcome back. Gah. How you doing? It's been a while, you know? It's been a little while. Got, uh, I, I figured we'd come back with a bang, though. We got some guests this week. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to take a pitch it. territory. <laughs> <laughs> Matt I got lost. I made the <laughs> I made the left turn at the stop sign. I usually make left. I wanted to see what the what was down the left side of the stop sign. <laughs> Let me tell you this, Fisher. Grass ain't always greener on the other side. Matt Fisher from on the power play. What's up, Matt? Guys, it's a beautiful time to be alive, man. <laughs> We're about to get some postseason baseball. Football's in the beginning stages of its season and uh all our teams have an interesting story, That's for and sure, uh, sure. hockey's about to start up. So, oh boy, best time of the year. We also have my boy Jason Greenberg, our resident Guardians fan here. How's it going? It's on guard. About time, about time we got someone <laughs> outside the tri-state area. I'm trying to make it a thing. <laughs> I've, 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 I've been saying on guard since the name changed. <laughs> People so, have people have been saying go guards. I think that's what's officially go guards that everyone's saying. But I, I like on guard. I think that's fantastic. I was, I was about to say, what is the official thing? Better than commanders. True. Yeah, well. But uh man, regular season's over. Yeah. Season flew, man. It it flew by. I don't know. I don't it, know about you guys, you know, with, with your teams kinda sort of mid, but for the for the Mets it flew by. Yeah, I mean. I made it up there. I got to see. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, a great time. Yeah, yeah, you Fisher, my your, brother. Your your Phillies broke the uh the second longest playoff drought in the in the majors. Yeah, next to the Seattle C- Seattle Mariners, who yeah. broke the largest. Oh my God, let's go Seahawks. At least, <laughs> at least, at least they didn't. At least they didn't style with a walk off homer. That, yeah, that was so, that was fucking cool. Cal well, Raleigh. We, we almost did with with a perfect game. I mean. Aaron Nola pitched the best game of his career. He needed to. He think he needed to. He needed to pitch the best game of his career. He had a great year. He did. Very, he, he, he quietly has good years. He had one of the most impressive seasons in baseball. Uh, I think one of the stats uh, compared to the walks to strikeout ratio, yeah. it was like one of the best in baseball. I think history. it might have been ever. I yeah. think that was the best ever. The first really? first pitcher to ever have. 200 plus strikeouts and third and or less 30, than 30, 30 walks. or less walks. He had less than ever. 30 walks. Yeah, 30 That's crazy. on the dot. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. I have an Aaron Nola signed baseball right over there. I'm, <laughs> I'm happy to have that one now. That's going up in value. There you go. You got it authenticated? I do not because I met him. Oh. So I was standing uh, two feet from him. Okay. I have a photo of him signing it, but I'm not in it. So yeah, yeah you um, could get it authenticated then. As I far mean, as my I, season, I started off um, really like I would just go. I saw the Angels come to town. I saw the Angels come to town, which was cool. I got to see uh, Otani and Trout. They they went too impressive. Otani got threw out by uh, Real Muto. That was awesome. <laughs> he got, I got the Angels coming next year. I got yeah. to that one. Yeah. Nice. They're worth it. I got um, to see. Um, Oh, sorry. Continue. Yeah, Go ahead. Um, my so one of my neighbors. Uh, hopefully, I can like get you get him on the podcast here. He'd probably be down. He was the bat boy for the Phillies this year, but uh, he was the road team bat boy. So he was on the <laughs> opposing team side, normally wearing the opposing team's uh, uniform. And I, I mean, I can't wait to ask him questions about what it's like <laughs> chilling with like Trout and Otani and like some of the awesome, like Alonzo, like some yeah, of the cool big, ass big, dudes. Big, baby. <laughs> That's crazy. I had a friend uh, growing up who was the bat boy for the Columbus Clippers. Not as cool. Triple <laughs> <laughs> A baseball is nothing. Um, Hang on, there's nothing wrong with minor league baseball. We're big. Minor minor league baseball. Baseball. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. That's minor true. Hometown straight. team. Go clips, clip show. But um, I I got to see a lot of wins, and then I went to go see the Phillies play the Mets, and then they lost the twice. I saw them play the Mets, and then the last game I went to, it was honestly the most beautiful day, and I had preseason tickets to the Flyers, so I'm like, no, let's are just you, go that you double dip. We that, that double dip. It's the greatest part about South Philly is you can it's double dip. Five minute walk. Yeah, exactly. Not even. <laughs> Not even. Um, and so um 
it was like a beautiful day and saw the uh you know brave face of phillies and that was another l so that was like uh, thanks for the help there yeah it was no help no help um (laughs) yeah so So that's why i was happy we made it um two three four five i think jason how many games you go to this year Man, I, I I honestly couldn't count. Probably like only like four or five. I went to opening day Guardians Reds, uh, and all the Reds fans looking at me and my group of friends, hilariously funny because we're all wearing Guardians gear in the middle of downtown Cincinnati. For those of you who don't know, I live in Cincinnati, um, so like I'll, I'll root for the Reds when they're not playing us. And so I got to go to a lot of Reds games uh, this year, mostly L's, a hundred losses. I think for the first time since. Uh, I think it was 1982 or something like that. They <laughs> were not crazy. good. Dude. They were awful. <laughs> Red, Reds, Reds are the worst team. Whoa. And, and the funniest part about it, here, here, the funniest part is this is like the first year where like the team who finishes towards the bottom doesn't get guaranteed first overall pick, second overall pick, third overall pick. So they just had like the worst season that they've had in 40 years. And they're they're awful. And I know the first pick isn't worth much in baseball. However, they might not even pick in the top 10. Yeah. <laughs> because of this and so i just think it's hilarious but the guardians had a fantastic year i loved it i watched almost every game that's why i pay for mlb tv and i also just steal my parents streaming services from back home um so it was it was a fantastic year i tried to make it up there and wasn't able to but uh i've promised myself if they make it back to the world series i didn't get to go in 2016 i'm definitely going this time if they can make it back <laughs> Well, so, and with yeah. the Reds, though, you got to remember, they at the end of April, they were on pace for 24 wins for the entire season. Yeah, that is so, true. They were really so bad. I, I got a shame because Reds. Joey Votto hangs on to that team so much. <laughs> There's no just, reason for him to right now. It's, it's not good. And he's beloved here. And that's one thing I'll say is, like, this entire city, everyone here loves Joey Votto. He's such a great person. He's How a Reds he lifer. Not? First ballot Hall of Famer, in my opinion. I just... I don't know why he stays, but at this point, who else is going to take him? Right. Yeah. He, he, he played 30, awful this year. So he played horrendous just, this just year. Let him, let him finish it out. Max, so, what were you so, going to say? Yeah. So, Jason, what was the average ticket price that you paid? Was it under $3? <laughs> or uh, For opening day for the Guardians game, so it, it $5? Was, no, that, that one we paid, I think, all of us about $75 each for, which was ridiculous. But opening day is a holiday. Opening right. day is a holiday in Cincinnati. Field like, level, at least? Uh, no. No, sports. No. Oh, wow. It's, when I tell you Cincinnati is baseball crazy at the beginning of the year, it, opening day is a <laughs> holiday. The city shuts down. You get off work. There's a parade that goes through downtown starting at like 8 in the morning. It's crazy. If you ever look up photos, that. you need to look up photos of opening day in Cincinnati. It is a bucket list event for any baseball fan. I need that um, injected in my veins. After that, I'm trying to remember exact games that I saw. I know I saw a Reds Pirates game. I think I probably you had a, you you were gonna go to bucks. a Reds Mets game, right? I was going to. I got sick just before then, and that was also Scherzer's first game back from injury, <laughs> and I obviously got sick for that one. Uh, that disappointing, but um, no, I probably paid on average less than twenty bucks anytime I went. I'm I know I went to. That. I know I went to a Reds Cardinals game because I really wanted to see pool holes in his last year. And um, I sat right in the outfield and it, it was a good time. I think that was actually fun fact. That was the Reds first home win of the season, but did and it, 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 it took like a month in. He did not. He did not. It's, he was, he struggled early in the year. Um, yeah. He did. That was the cool thing. I think throughout this year was watching the chase with pool holes for 700 yeah. and judge when it became apparent that he was, not stopping for 62. Yeah. And I mean, also with judge, you got to remember that in, at the beginning of August, he was on pace for like 75. You know, he was, he was, he was, yeah. he was far ahead of bonds. He was like four oh, yeah. ahead of bonds at that point in the season. So, I mean, I wish I was old enough to have watched bonds this 2001 season. No, you don't. No, you don't. I do. <laughs> no, you don't. I do. You're living in this time man. right now. Philly. <laughs> Right now, there's never <laughs> better better time to live in your prime than it is right now. That's true. Hey, in Ohio, that's true. Guardians are good. Cavs are good. Blue Jackets are good. Bengals are good. What a time to be alive. There's always New York, a you got the Mets, you got the Ohio. Jets, it's you got the Knicks. 
the you really Jets. Want to right now? Zach Wilson. <laughs> you Zach really want me to Wilson. go get the, get the Mets fans thing? Who day? Who day? Uh, I made, I made a meme, by the way, Max. I gotta, I gotta send it to you. Oh God! Anyway, My team is host? undefeated. <laughs> I'm glad so we don't play you guys this year. I'm glad we got that out of the way. All impressive doing it. Bengals should be 4 0. Bengals, Bengals are two plays going their way away from 4 0. Anyway, uh, we'll see you Pools, at the top. Pools finally <laughs> hits 700 uh, in LA, fittingly, uh, against the Dodgers, the team yeah. that you gave him a chance last year. I mean, realistically, yeah. the Dodgers don't give him a chance. He's out of baseball. Um, Maybe. We I, don't, we, you, don't, you don't know that for certain. You know, another team might have picked them up. But for for segment sake, yes. More likely than not, you know. Yeah. I, I think so, honestly. When you, when you saw how his career was going with the Angels at the end there and he was barely playing, until he got to the Dodgers, we had no clue if this guy could play. Right. Almost revitalizes his career, and I think that's when St. Louis was like, okay, let's bring him back for one more kind of hoorah. And I don't think they expected what they got out of him at the end of the year here with these home runs. I think they just kind of expected, okay, this guy's going to be a bench guy, almost like a coach, mm-hmm. and kind of coast through the season. And then at the end of the year, he'll get his swan song, tip the cap. And they ended up getting a lot of production out of him throughout the final months of the season. Got 702, was that the final? 703. 703. 703. He ended up getting one he more. He homered in the last that last bat, game. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So ended up getting 703. And I, I think that's one of the best stories of the year, especially mm-hmm. for a guy like Pool Holes, who, you know, we haven't heard that much from since yeah. probably 2013, 2012, 2013. Well, and here's the thing I just found on Reddit. Uh Pool's second half created just enough to- of a total war to bring his career total. Over a hundred. Oh, so really? You're at ninety nine five. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, because he was negative the past couple of years. Yep. So twenty twenty, he ended at one hundred point one. Last year, he ended at ninety nine five. He ends his career at one hundred one seven. Yeah, and it's just crazy. Like this is a once in a lifetime offensive player that we got to watch growing up, and you know, I'm sure all of us idolized him. We we're playing wiffle ball. We all did the the Albert Pujols whole yeah. stance and yep. you know you're a lefty so fuck you uh, <laughs> hey, I'm a right um, tanners aren't real <laughs> so you know it's just uh it's bittersweet because we know he's going to be a, a first ballot hall of famer I don't know how he's not unanimous um yeah, I, yeah just a tremendous career from a uh, tremendous guy and I can remember I can I can remember back God, it had to have been like 2012. There used to be a commercial where it was like, my grandfather had Babe Ruth. My dad had, uh, oh, it couldn't have been Willie Mays. I think it's still a little Hank older Aaron. for most people. To, Hank Aaron. Um, and then it was and then it was like, and now I got to watch Albert Pujols do everything, kind of stuff right. like that. And right. I remember that commercial sticking out of my head. Well, the crazy part is we had Pujols, we had Ichiro as well. And, you know, obviously Ichiro's career, Gita. he ended his career, what, two or three years ago? 2018? 20, I mean, like yeah. Went tw- technically 2019. 2019, he played the first guy who, yeah. who really did it all. Don't really count. That, um, 2018. But yeah. Pujols also kind of ruined Yachty's swan song there at the end, too. All the focus was shifted to Pujols and his chase for 700, where Yachty, let's be real, is, in my opinion, a top five catcher all the time. No, but I yeah. think people in Cincinnati would be reluctant <laughs> to agree with you there, but 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 when you look at the longevity, the the defense, the numbers, I mean, yes, the he loyalty, the hitter. best the of the loyalty. last twenty years, for sure. That, but yeah, no, but but again, no, he he definitely, you know, in the middle in the of his career, he definitely was a solid hitter, and we know he's an elite defender, and for how long he has done it defensively, and to not really get that many days off, you know. Right. That is, uh, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say he's a top five. I'd put him maybe in top ten, but yeah, he was he was good. Of our lifetime, he's top five. Top five. Oh top yeah, five. easy. easy. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm just saying, I can't wait to watch this matchup. I'm just, I just can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait to throw our two aces out against these hold, guys. Hold on, we'll, we'll get there. I just want to talk about Judge quick. 
Okay. We'll get back Let's to Let's talk about yeah. it, Judge, because I am so impressed. I have been watching this guy. I'm like, dude, like, what a scene. Like, like this dude has the greatest nickname in sports. <laughs> Literally, they go all rise and the whole crowd rises. Like, come dude, on. That's the, fucking... the chase was insane. Like, I was there for when he hit 60. Insanity. Man. Everybody stood up. All the phones came out as soon as he's walking to the plate. Not even when he said it, he's walking to the plate. They're starting this shit. Mm-hmm. Everybody's standing. The only people sitting down are the handicapped people, and they wish they were standing. I mean, it was insanity. Every at bat, every pitch. I mean, you saw down at the end, at the, towards the end, where he's after he hit 60, 61, 62, you know, every pitch that was a ball was a, they were booing him. This is absolute insanity how into it these, the people are in general. It was, they it was cut from college football. That's what I was just about to mention is I, so I was at the Ohio state Wisconsin game. Um, I think it was, was it last? It was two Saturdays ago. And, you know, we're, we're at Buffalo wild wings before the game, watching all the college football games and every TV would cut to Aaron judge on his chase for 62 or 61. And so it was, it was definitely the most, like, I think, high press baseball moment that I've seen in my lifetime in terms of like a record breaker, everyone looking for him to chase it. And so, and I don't know your guys' opinion on it. And I'm actually interested to hear this. I remember Bonds' chase was like, everyone was tuning in for that. But do you, so that. here's where I'll say, do you view judges as the legitimate record? God damn it, Jason. Why just do my question? <laughs> um, you know, he made it look so easy. So it's like, when we're saying it's like, oh, this is the greatest record like I, we've ever seen. I'm like, Craig, he made it look pretty, pretty dang easy. Not given the fact he's playing in the shortest ballpark of baseball. Like, come on. So, so Fisher, let me, let me, let me give you a little insight here. I've, I said that for the longest time. I have since significantly softened my stance on that. Cause what is it, Billy, left center? At Yankee Stadium is absurd. Yeah. yeah. Oh, second, deep, second biggest. deepness. Oh, yeah. It's ridiculous. Second right biggest. Right field. Yeah. No problem. I get that. But look at the rest of it. It's not. It's not as mu- as small of a ballpark as people say. I softened my stance significantly on that. It's not Cincinnati. That's for sure. Yeah. Oh no! Ball gets <laughs> flying out. <laughs> ball ball gets flying so. out. It's like, and hot summer days. Like, don't forget how big the dude is. Yeah. Ball, but the ball flies for everybody in that ballpark. But didn't he hit? Actually, I'd be really interested to hear this, Max. Do you have the numbers on the splits? How was he on the road versus I at can home? Pull that up right now. But I'm, I mean, I remember in the middle of the season he was like almost identical, pretty much everything across the board. Okay, but I haven't seen anything right updated in in months now. So, so I mean, Billy, what what do mm-hmm. you think is is Judge's record the legit one? Fisher, I don't know. I don't know if I heard your answer for sure or not, but I mean, probably yeah. I mean, let me let give me wrong. Sixty-two on runs, crazy. With no roids. Yeah, with no roids. No roids. Yeah, no, and that, as far as we know, yet. <laughs> so, uh, so but, I would uh, say, oh, probably no. yeah. It's probably quite impressive. I would say, I don't know. It's hard to say, like. Obviously, seventy three is is obviously the number. That's a fucking ridiculous number. Like, think about it. <laughs> seventy three fucking home runs in the season, dude. That is actually insane. Sixty two is insane, but uh, ten is insane in my opinion. <laughs> like, I, yeah, but you have to think about it. Until nineteen ninety eight, no one touched Maris's sixty one. Yeah, and then all of a sudden you have McGuire and Sosa out here just juicing it up and. Yeah. You know, passing it to seventy, and then you have Bonds come along with seventy three. Well, so like, I, I mean, here's the thing. First off, Judge had thirty at home, thirty two on the road. Okay. Um. So it's not a Yankee Stadium factor, right? So you talk about the the Sosa McGuire thing, and and this we'll I'll touch on this real quick. That saved baseball, regardless of yeah, it did or no juice. It saved baseball. It baseball did for sure. Dying sport. Well, it was you know after the. Depends um, what market you were in. After the 94 strike. Yeah. And I think so, baseball needed Judge to do this after this lockout. And I was right. just 
on MLB Network last week. Uh, I don't even remember who it was. It was it was a couple of reporters. I think it was uh, I think it was Tom Berducci, and oh, the one uh, we don't shit on. I forgot who the other one was. Maybe Heyman. Uh, huge, huge tits. tits. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they were saying how you know, like Giant. during during uh ninety eight, like they were literally just flying ballpark to ballpark to follow the chase, and. Anytime either of them got up, like every fucking uh, channel just went straight to them, you know? So, yeah, that was uh, a huge cultural, it had a huge cultural impact at the time. And I remember my sister telling me that, like, she remembers in school, like, that's all anybody was talking about. Like, they would, uh, she was in elementary school at the time, and she was saying that, like, you know, the teacher, like, actually, like, you know, Sammy Sosa or Mark McGuire, and they, like, split off into teams and such. Like, really? that must have been crazy. Yeah. So. I, I truly think it depends on what market you grow up into. And and I think baseball's popularity comes in waves. Because, like, when I think about it, okay, Max, when, when would you say that you feel like baseball was the most popular in New York? Obviously, in, in your lifetime, we think of the you Yankees. Start with you start with 9 Yeah. And that, and that's where I say the Yankees dynasty in that late nineties, early two thousands, it then probably wanes a bit. Wasn't and then you have the Yankees good again. Wasn't O2 the Subway Series World that Series? Was 2000, that was 2000. 2000. That was 2000. But then kind of dies off a bit. People stop caring. They kind of care more about the Giants winning their Super Bowls. Right. The Giants were good. Super Bowl, yep. And then the Mets make the World Series of 2015. Then the Yankees have their run of dominance getting to the ALCS like four years straight from like 2017 through 19 or three years straight, whatever it was. So for the New York market, you kind of only recognize like those waves and patterns of baseball. When you think about me in Ohio, the Guardians Indians franchise from 95 to 97 were in the World Series twice. And baseball was huge. Right. Then New York takes over. And baseball in Ohio just kind of took a nosedive. People mm-hmm. stopped caring. Browns came back in '99. That's the not Bengals. To oh yeah, no, I don't. I don't. I'm obviously not as a Browns fan. I don't. I don't care. But then the Bengals kind of started to have their run of dominance in the early uh, 2010s, and so people didn't really care. And then all of a sudden, we have, in my opinion, the greatest World Series in 2016, which I feel that's what kind of revived baseball back to life was that 2016 World Series because I think the entire nation cared about the Cubs mm. at that point, and not and they're them me. trying to <laughs> them trying to break the record. I obviously I have the most pain in that moment so, with so, with the 2016 Indians, but but in Ohio, it. like. Baseball skyrocketed in 2016. In 2016, 17, 18, right. everyone was glued. And right. Then oh, we were bad Lindor again. There. Yes, when Lindor was there. And then it just died again. So and I think until this year, baseball in Ohio, when the Reds are, and the Guardians were bad, we didn't care. We, we, we would never have cared for Judge, Judge's 62 home runs. We would have The broadcast would come on and everyone would shut it off and go to Ohio State football for it because no one wanted to watch it. And I feel like regardless of market, this was something that people did want to watch. And it does help that the Guardians are getting better. So now people in this region are caring about baseball again. And so, and it, and it depends what market you're in. If you're in Oakland right now, do you give a fuck about Aaron Judge? No. They don't no, you don't care about anything, Aaron Judge. You don't no care about anything. Team. They have no sports teams. They just lost everything. Think about Chicago having probably the worst year of baseball since since 2015. White Sox and the Cubs were both bad, and well, so, so, so let's so let's go down to, to Philly then real quick because th- these guys, I mean Fisher, you you're a walking embodiment of this. Well, I, I just want to say teams uh, my opinion. Round. I just want to sp- say my opinion about what's going to make baseball great is the rule changes that are going to come to this sport with like the speed clock and like actually laying punishment down. Like yeah. I had a caddy uh, I was caddying with. Uh, who actually works for a team in the minors and they were talking about all the rules that they were following. And he goes, dude, we average like 28 minutes faster yeah, per game. Insane. And he goes like, 
And it's like, you think you're just, just going to have trouble following the rules. Honestly, it makes the sport better. Like, you know, like, ha- they, and they was like, talking about get all eyes the on TV ones. again. Yeah, mm-hmm. all the other ones. It'll make it a lot like, faster pace. You can only, like, like throw, try and pitch, uh, pick off a pit, uh, runner, like, three times. You can only do that per batter, yeah. or else it's a balk. Like, they're actually punishing, like, slow. That, one, that one's a little stupid. But, I mean, talk about the popularity of, of, of baseball in Philly real quick. Now that you're the playoffs. And well, we'll it, it really it, – it, it, it. it has been a wave, like – Popularity with baseball, I mean, it's always a great summer thing. Like, even when the Phillies suck, like, going down the ballpark and, like, getting cheap tickets and just, you know, having a day and, you know, it's seeing the beauty the of it. Yeah, yeah, it's beauty. It's always there. Uh, but when we're talking about, like, you know, getting the red October and, like, getting that feel, because, you know, so, so Phillies Fisher, won the World you, Series. You, I was going to say, you've experienced the World Series. Yes. And you've ex- experienced plenty of playoff runs. You've, you've seen them go to the World Series twice. Twice, yeah. And I mean, you see a Super Bowl, too. I mean, a Super Bowl, yep. Yeah. Philly fans are passionate, man. So, so I've gotten to see all the losses. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a World Series loss, seen a Super Bowl loss. I got to, I, I, what? I saw a Stanley Cup loss. I didn't. I'm Blue I saw Jackets. That one. I saw that oh, one. no. Uh, the oh, yeah. I saw one Stanley Cup loss. Oh, that's right. So, um, so, what is it like now with the Phillies back in the postseason for the first time in, what, 11 years? Yes. Yeah, since uh, 20, 2011. 2011, Since, since yeah. holiday, right? Yep. Yeah. That would, no, oh, no, no year it was, um, yeah, it was the year after because it was 2010 because they swept the Reds. Oh, you're right, talking about the no-hitter. The holiday. The no-hitter. No, yeah, that no was 2011. No, I'm talking about since the holiday era. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Oh, they haven't, yeah. The last yeah. time, well, it all started when, um, I mean, Ryan Howard blew out his kill. That was real against the Cardinals in the first round. Oh, that really? Was, wow. So they played the Cardinals in the first yeah. round. Yes. And what year was that? 2011? 2012. That was 2012. 2012, yes. That and, was when um, the Reds played the Giants, I think. And, yes, right? and they got reverse swept. And the Giants ended up going all the but, way. Um, right. 2012 was the as first year of the one-game wild card. popularity wave, I mean – it really came back strong when we got Harper. Like that was like, phew. yeah, that's, we just got one of the gonna, best players in the NL to come here. Gonna, definitely going to boost your, uh, yeah, your oh, take quite a, a bit. And then he brought so many great uh, players. Like he brought Real Muto here. He brought Score here. He brought you know, well, you look at Nick Castellanos. I mean, former look, Red and Kyle Schwarber. If so, so let me ask this: with the NL is the NL home run king. Like, thank God we got that guy. So, 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 Fisher, let me ask you this: Yes, with the lineup that the Phillies have, yes. what kind of chance do you think they have against the Cardinals? I mean, it's, it's all about catching that spark, right? This team can hit, They're like from down the to top to down, they can hit. You know, as far as like them getting the spark to hit. I mean that that need that needs to happen. Yeah, I mean you've seen you've been seeing it from Schwarber. He hit you know forty six, right? Yeah, he hit forty six. Yeah. I thank God we got that. I cannot say that enough. Thank God we got that guy. Um, but like you uh, also see like down the line, uh, like especially during the September month, which wasn't really that good. But like you had to see hitting from someone. You saw hitting from like. Bryson Stott, Nick Maton, Matt Beerling, like Bill. the kids, uh, the kids on the bottom of the order. Not to also mention Segura batting eighth, who just rake, At, absolutely rake. But then you like, and, it's just tough because like, yeah, they kind of are like a swing for the fences type team, but they have that power. For but them. that's what I was going to say is like in the playoffs and I saw their projected lineup they have Segura down at the bottom of the lineup and they have Schwarber up at the first up in the leadoff spot right Right. and he hit 32 home runs from the leadoff spot which is the most in the major leagues this year so the Phillies have an interesting construction of the lineup like yes it is power for the most part you know yeah but if you look at it it's like once you get around that lineup you have guys that could get on base in front of Schwarber after that first inning, it's kind of, it's kind of like, and they go, and you look at their lineup, they go, you know, lefty, 
righty, lefty, righty, right. Yeah. They do the lefty righty oh, switch. Lefty, off. Yeah. yeah, they're pretty consistent at switching it off. So it's hard to even pitch against them. Like, especially when you're talking about reliever wise. Right. Um, mm-hmm. But as far as like but we're talking about the Cardinals guy, bullpen too. Uh, uh, the bullpen's been well. I mean, consi- it's been consistently good. Um, you saw, you know, real guys step up, mm-hmm. like a um, who's that bull's name? Um, you guys hate him up in New York. Al- Alvarado. Alvarado. Oh. He's been so good. Yeah, I bet you. He's been um, so good. Um, but yeah, the bullpen's been you know consistent, and um, as far as the starting pitching, I mean, when we're going in the series. You're gonna throw Wheeler out game one and Nola game two, like that. Those two, we- those two horses have a real good chance of getting it done. I was surprised. Like you look at like some of the top names analysts, like Ben Verlander. Hey, Rod. We, 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 don't, we don't count Ben Verlander here. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. I, I won't but, talk. I was just but, looking so, at so, people's, you know, predictions, how it's going. And not many people are predicting the Phillies. And it's like a little so, surprising, you know? I was, I, I was actually on the fence about the Phillies in my bracket, right? Because I saw that the Cardinals' top four hitters based on offensive war this season have the best hitter in their entire lineup is Nolan Arenado against Nola and Wheeler. And he's only hitting like 240 or something like that. Right. I was like, that is that is outrageous. Yeah, so I was like the Phillies oh. have had the cards numbers this year. I, I was on the yeah and that's we haven't played them in a while though. So this whole like Albert Pool holes run has happened yeah. since the last time the Phillies played them. But uh it should make for an interesting contest. I, I like our chances. It's so, a beautiful so, brand matchup. Yeah. I'll say that right there. Oh my yeah, God. It's... Cardinals, Phillies. That's going to be probably, I think, the game of the day in terms of both just historic brands for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, so so looking at this, yeah, obviously the Cardinals with Pujols being red hot towards the second half of the year. Two MVP candidates in Aaron Otto and Goldschmidt. You have obviously Wainwright and Yachty in the playoffs. Two rocks there. The only thing I'd be concerned about as a Cardinals fan would be the middle innings if you don't get much out of the starters. Because obviously in the playoffs, it's managed differently. Uh, you know, starters have a shorter leash no matter who they are. Uh, getting to Gallegos and Hicks in the back end of that pen, that I think is going to be tough, especially with the power, as you've said, in this Phillies lineup. And how how it's constructed, it's, it's a very difficult lineup to to navigate. Who are you going to pitch around? Done. Right, exactly. exactly. You, there's really nobody to pitch around throughout that entire lineup, which I think was the goal from the start with the Phillies, with Dombrowski. The goal is to be un, unbeatable in terms of there's no holes in the lineup. The pitching has gotten better this year. Um, I, I Personally, I, I don't know how the Cardinals are going to line up their rotation. Um, I haven't seen anything about that yet. I'm, I think Wainwright's going game one, though, I thought. I be shocked if he wasn't. I'll check. Keep going. Um, I, I think Fisher, you said it best. It's going to be a very interesting series that is a lot more evenly matched. Quintana game one Philly versus look, Wheeler. Look it's Quintana Harper, game man. one. Quintana game one. Wow. Look to Harper, man. It's like you know, Harper's came back from this uh time off. Like he hasn't looked quite like himself, but you know, it's like. It doesn't take much for him to get going. Right. We're also talking about playoffs where anything can happen. So right. I'm going to say it's going to – I'm going to say – I'm going to pick the Cardinals personally, but it's going to be a three-game series. And it's going to be a dog you, fight. But if it's, I, if it's three, I wouldn't be surprised if, if it's the Cards. But if it's two, I think it's no doubt in my mind it's the Phillies. That are gonna so it's either win a those. Philly sweep or Cardinals in three. Right. For you. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. What do you? What about I you mean, guys? I, I I agree with that actually. Oh man, I'm I'm so inclined to agree. At first, going into this, I was like, it's such a coin flip. Honestly, mm-hmm. this could be the one going to the wire of any series. I love Bryce Harper as a as a player, and I really think, I really think the Phillies could pull this off. You know it's how just, many guys have been? It's hard to bet against the Cardinals, pitching? but I do think the Phillies have better pitching. And so yeah, I, I, I think I'm going to switch and I'm going to go with the Phillies. I you know think how many people are facing them. their first postseason games in the Phillies lineup? 
You're talking Hoskins, Segura, Real Muto. It's a similar thing that the Mets have too, and I think and the Guardians, but it's because the Guardians are like 22 years old. (laughs) Yeah, there's a lot of players in this this postseason field that are going to have it's their first time, you know. I think that that's probably why I chose the Cardinals as the, the playoff experience as well. It's gonna go. I think it's gonna go three, uh, and it's gonna be a dog fight. That's okay. how I feel. I just, as a Phillies fan, I wouldn't feel super confident about Ranger Suarez right now, especially compared to Nolan that's Wheeler. Fair. That's fair. Yeah, but, Ranger uh, has had his problems uh, late in this season. Lately, yeah. I mean, and if, that's where the bullpen is... manager comes into play. Yeah. And especially since there's no days off. I I mean I don't really know the bullpens of each team that well, but I wouldn't guarantee that one is better than the other, based off of what I do know. Right. I'm excited. I'm excited. It's been a while since this team's been in postseason. Let's see what they you got. Any games? Um, <laughs> they can't. They would. So if oh, does in, right, in it yeah, yeah. It's if they were to play postseason baseball in Philadelphia, they would have had to play, I think, fourteen consecutive road games, because they've closed the season with a ten game road. Right. That's there tough. you go. I think it's fifteen. That's actually. tough. Yeah, uh, if they play, they would have to play fifteen straight road games. Yeah, that would be fifteen. Yeah, that's right. tough. Wow. Well, I might switch whoever, back to the cards. <laughs> <laughs> whoever wins that game, I'm gonna be gonna be pulling for them in the next round. So, oh man, facts, big facts. Never thought I'd be a Phillies fan in a playoff series. <laughs> Never, I'm, never, I'm, I'm not saying life. I'm not saying fan. I'm just I'm, just, <laughs> I'm leaning. Never in my life have I rooted you for the see Phillies us, more than this year. You want to see the Phillies Mets battle before a World Series? <laughs> That'd be uh, great because the Mets have had the Phillies number. <laughs> I don't mind that at all. <laughs> I would love that. Uh, Four games right to the World Series. <laughs> just gotta get me a ticket, Max. Hey man, hey, I gotta get me a ticket. Of the Mets. <laughs> and speaking of the Mets. Yeah, let's, let's stay in the end. No, Fisher, you want to hang around for the rest for, for us to talk more playoffs? Yeah, I can chirp around. <laughs> chirp oh, around. Let's stick in the NL. Mets, I'm Padres. Get water. I'll be right back. All right. You got it. Mets, Padres in at City Field. I mean, Fisher alluded to it before with the Phillies lineup. The Mets have a lot of first time, uh, first first playoff experience uh, in their lineup. It helps they have Max Scherzer going game one. I mean, the guy's seen it all. He's done it all. Uh, oh yeah, the most probably outside of Verlander, I think probably the most experienced in the playoffs right now, and probably right. better experienced than he, Verlander. I think he has more. Yeah, does he have more? I was gonna I, say, I if anything, it's worth more. I think he right. has like thirty something starts. They were on the same team for the, all yeah, those World for, Series uh, runs Tigers. in Detroit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, don't forget Wainwright obviously has that all that experience as well. Oh, um, forgot about those guys. When I mean, we just he's, talked he's about every him. year, um, yeah. but it's because the NL Central is weak. Facts. Very mid. Uh, so only, only half, only half of the Mets lineup does not have playoff experience. By the way, just put that. Let's out there. see. So it's we got. I don't think Nemo has playoff experience. Correct. Need All a... right. You want me to read off the lineup, the projected lineup? Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. I both? mean, you know it. Yeah. Well, I'll, all right. I'll give you the Mets: Nemo, Lindor, McNeil, Alonzo, Vogi, Escobar, Canna, Naquin, and Nito. Tyler Naquin, man. Oh, so I guess they're projecting that Marte is not going to be on the wild card roster. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The Mets Tyler Naquin, what could have been for us, huh? <laughs> I might be the only person that, in the world who owns a Tyler Naquin uh, Indians jersey. That inside the park walk off. <laughs> oh my god, that was one of that my was, favorite memories ever. That is definitely one of the coolest things that I've ever seen. I uh, remember they they still show that on, on MLB Network every. Oh fucking, yeah, why why wouldn't you? That season. used to be. One of my favorite teachers in high school, I, when I follow him on Twitter, um, he literally had that as his profile picture for like five years. It was great, oh, no, and it, sure. it's probably it's probably been five years since that, or six years. It was 2016 before the that playoff was 2016. run. It was against so, yeah. the Blue Jays. Um, yeah, as, wow, in August. Yeah, that was 
That was forever ago, man. <laughs> I'm That's what getting I'm saying. old. 2016 was the last time the Mets were in the playoffs. It feels like oh, yes. forever ago. Six, I'm, six, I'm, six years. I'm getting old, man. That was that was one of the greatest years of my life, you know, with the Cavs winning at the beginning <laughs> of the summer. Then, you know, Indians, Guardians, all the way to the World Series. That was that was incredible. Back to the max. Back to the – Tyler Nake went on a, on a tantrum. So, so uh, obviously not as long as the Phillies, but six years for the Mets. <laughs> DeGrom has the playoff experience. Now, the Mets are interesting where they – I don't think they've announced how they're going to set up the rotation yet. They have not. What they – what the – The plan? Theory of yeah. the plan is, is Scherzer's going game one. That is definite. If they drop game one, they will put out DeGrom for game two. If they do not – if they win game one, Bassett will go game two. Now, you and, also have to remember all three of those guys have – DeGrom has the least playoff experience. Does he really? Yeah, he's only been there one time. Yeah, one time. Bassett's been there twice. Yeah. Wow. So. Um, that's interesting. Uh, either way, all three of you guys have had pretty solid seasons. Uh, and I have no problem with either of those, any of those guys throwing any game. Yeah. I have the most faith in those, faith in those three. Now, we were talking about before we started recording, the Padres rotation is Darvish. Snell, Snell Musgrove. Musgrove. Um, again, those are three pitchers who I don't want to face in a three game series. That besides sides my my season, I'll be honest. Darvish carved up the Mets this year with I think his ERA is what oh six four six four. Um, I don't want I don't want to face any of those guys like this. And the Padres lineup again, mm-hmm. it the one through six we talked about it is very deep. Uh, I don't know you know the, you the, the lineup and the, you know the Mets won two games against the Padres this year, right? Do you know who pitched in those games? Was Peterson one of them? No. Bassett. Nope. All right. Last guess guessing. Scherzer. Scherzer. No, Carlos Carrasco pitched in both of them. Really? And he, he went. He went six shutout in both. Anyway, you want Gotta the love Padres, cookie, man? <laughs> You want the uh, Padres lineup, you said? Yeah, that's who we got. All right, so you got Profar, Soto, Machado, Drury, Cronenworth, Bell, Kim, Nola, and Grisham. Yeah, again, that's a deep lineup. I mean, top to bottom, that's that's, that's a team that can hit. Mm-hmm. Um, no easy outs there. Some easier than others, but no real easy outs. Uh, also, Nola's become a solid hitter yeah. for, for a catcher. Um, I I don't want to pick against the Mets. I don't. There's a very real chance that the Mets can lose the series. They can. But, Anyone can lose any. No, but there's a very the real chance that the Padres could come into City Field and move on to play the Dodgers. Yeah, I, I mean, you 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 also got it's it's, it's the playoffs. Like right. this is different. What happened in the season has it's fucking nothing. I mean right. it. I'll give it like 15% fucking that it matters. You know, like these, all these hitters, they're turning the page. You know, they might be feeling good or bad of about how they, you know, ended the season, but it's, it's a new ball game. Everybody's zero and zero. Yeah. And you want to know, in my opinion, and, and here's why I think the Mets do have a big advantage is there's one guy on their roster who has been there time and time again, has always shown in the biggest moments. Anytime his number was called and they needed him, he came through outside of one time, which mm-hmm. nobody, it, it didn't work for anyone. And that's Francisco Lindor. Yeah. Francisco Lindor a career. in the postseason is incredible. Yeah. The 2016 run came up mm-hmm. huge. 2017 hit the Grand Slam against the Yankees to bring him within one. There is a guy who literally every time it's counted, Lindor shows up in the postseason and outside of 2020, and that wasn't his fault. And, and just to piggyback off what you're saying, look at what Lindor since he's uh, come to the Mets last year, his two seasons here. Every single time, it feels like every single time they're on a nationally televised game, he does something. Oh, you know? yeah, right. he, like, big moments. Moments. He's, show, he's a oh. showtime player. He, he is... loves, loves, loves that pressure and that spotlight. And that's what made him so good. Yeah. I'll we miss that with here. Max Scherzer any day of with, the week. With that, with that gold glove caliber defense and you match it with the clutch bat. I mean, got yourself an MVP. 
Did the Mets get the night game both days or just the one? All, every all game. Three. Yeah. Every, every, all three. And I'm yeah. going to take the Mets, by the way, to win the series. I I am too. Uh, me three. And that could be a, a dangerous game. What Fisher has yeah. to say. I've been surprised by how consistent the Padres have been on this uh, wild card run they've been on. Like, I thought they were like, dude, there's, there's got to be a way for the Phillies just to pass them. Like, because yeah. I've always felt like the Phillies were better than the Padres just looking right. at their lineup. But they've been able to, you know, hold their own against some of the, the teams that they were facing at the end of the year. And they were tough teams, like the Dodgers. Um, who else? Who else they faced? But I mean, like, the Giants, they play, play the Giants. The Giants are mid as fuck. Yeah. And they lost. Yeah. Yeah, but they were facing tough teams at the end of the year, and um, they were holding their own. So, mm-hmm. are you picking the I'll Padres? Is that what this is? I'll go Mets. I'll go uh, Mets because uh, I want to see Phillies <laughs> Mets in the game. <laughs> you got me worried there. You hyped yeah. the Padres. I thought you were gonna pick the Padres. I'm, be- I might have to kill you. Game, game three. Get him out. Three. <laughs> game three. Pete Alonso is gonna be. You're gonna be like. Pete Alonzo, game three. Game oh, three, man. Pete Alonzo. Sunday night, Pete. Oh, yes. That'd be great. Um, Any final thoughts on that? Boy, the Mets are ripping you, out the at blacks. Least at least you got a chance to go see them. Like, I got to watch from fucking home. Man, like, some of these prices, I ain't got a chance. <laughs> um, yeah, City Field, man. Mm. Crazy. They want what, some people want 175 for the 500s. Yeesh. Hey, <laughs> That's bad. all I can say. Hey, hey man, Fisher, I Fisher, remember where we sat? Somebody wants like yeah. 200, 220 for that. Hey, Capital man, I paid, I think, 300, I paid 300 plus dollars per ticket uh, to go see the Bengals versus the Titans, the Tennessee Titans in Nashville last year uh, to send the Bengals to the AFC championship game. Thank God. 300 but per geez. 300 per. And it was, it was four of us who all paid. And I was the only Bengals fan. <laughs> Playoff tickets are nuts, man. Oh yeah. Um, it's ridiculous. All right. So move over to the AL where, I mean, Jason, you said it, it's really up for grabs. Oh yeah. Um, AL is, is any team out of the AL can win it. So let's start north of the border where Seattle Mar- the Seattle Mariners ended their drought and they're traveling to Toronto. By the way, friend of the pod, yeah. our guy from Player Tea Party, is going to be in Toronto. He's driving up there <laughs> today. Uh, he's going to be in Toronto. He's got game one tickets and he's going to p- get nosebleeds for game two. I mean, dude's a big time, big time Mariners fan. Think about how many Mariners fans are probably going to yeah. be there. Oh, it's yeah. it's going to be anyone who has a valid passport definitely try to make a flight. Passport well, it's has the even even they have fucking five hundred bucks left in their wallet. They're going they're spending all of it to go. Well, it's funny because when you look at the past few years, the amount of like Seattle Mariners games that all end up being Blue Jays fans, though. Because of how many like people in Vancouver are Blue Jays fans yeah. just for the Canada connection. Right. I feel like this is about to be the revenge game where it's going <laughs> to be like Rogers Center taken over by Seattle, like Mariner fans. It's going to be insane. It's going to be a great atmosphere because the Blue Jays are a good team. And yeah. I wanted when you get to see Alec Manoa. I wanted uh, that I mean, to be the night game so bad. No offense to the Mets. I really, really was hoping that Blue Jays Mariners were going to be one of the night games. I think that's going to be such a great series in Toronto. I'm not going to lie. I was at the ballpark. The ballpark's the dumpster, Isn't but, it? oh yeah, it's awful. But Toronto? on TV, it looks beautiful. Roger center in Toronto. Yeah. My uncle stayed there. He said it was a nice like stay, but it's like, it's not yeah, the, the stadium. Stadium's not fantastic. I, I, and I love the city of Toronto. I just looks better on TV than in person. Um, Makes sense. <sighs> The Blue Jays lineup is so good, man. And yeah. and and while I think the nation has the Mariners in their heart and being from Cincinnati, and that team is literally just all former Reds. <laughs> it, it's, it quite literally is just all former Cincinnati Reds. And that's why I think this entire city, like if I went out to a bar or went downtown, it's going to be all Mariners. However, I just think that Blue Jays lineup is so good. 
And I know they have the worst pitching staff in the playoffs, I believe, when I was looking at like the numbers. I I think the Blue Jays come away with this one. I really yeah, the do. Blue Jays, they they really fall off after after Manoa. After Manoa yeah. Which is why I think it's gonna be very interesting because Manoa is, is your game one guy. And yeah. and he's he's a dog. I mean oh, yeah. I love watching him pitch. Me too. Um, That's why we had him on fantasy. He's, <laughs> yeah, facts. He's he's a superstar in this game, but he's one guy. You know, and who's who's their two starter? Do I don't even know. Let me look. Um because doesn't say Mar- to be determined. The, right, but the Mariners you're looking at Logan Gilbert, Robbie Ray. Robbie Ray. Probably Rob um, uh Wait, uh, I saw MLB Network had it earlier, but yeah, it doesn't say at all. I mean, and then don't forget Luis Castillo. Luis so Castillo, three, three very good pitchers going for the Mariners, probably. I'm not gonna lie, I I I know he's looked great. He's looked and fantastic. I know the world the has seen him, and they think he looks great. Castillo is a fraud. I've watched his entire career as he's been here in Cincinnati. <laughs> he is a fraud. Oh, Gossman, Gossman's going. Game. Oh, Gossman. Okay. Like and Castillo. Gossman had a great year, actually. He did have a great year. Castillo yeah. might end up pitching well tomorrow night. Oh, and they have Barrios. Afternoon. Barrios. Barrios sucks. They have Ross yeah. Stripling. They have projected Ross Stripling. Yeah. Isn't it yeah. kind of hilarious that Robbie Ray went from the Blue Jays to the Mariners and now has to go back to Toronto to play him in the playoffs? <laughs> I think that's about that's, worse. That could be the thing. biggest fuck you game in the world for him. Yeah. That could be the biggest fuck you for him to say to the Blue Jays. I mean, does he need to say fuck you? What do he do? I'm picking Seattle. I don't know. I'm on Seattle. I'm on that Seattle. I'm going to go to the Mariners too, yeah. I want Seattle, but I do think that – and I think that they want it more probably. Um, But the Jays are are, – they are a better team on paper, and you really can't deny that. Um, So I think the Jays, man – yeah. And, and Max, you know how much that pains me. I have a friend who plays I, for the Mariners. Yep, like, yep. I'm going with the Jays. Isn't, there, uh, isn't there a kid that's pitching that went to East Stroudsburg? Matt Festa. The, yep. Yep. Big yeah. Matt Festa fan. Staten Island kid. And then uh, Evan White went to my high school and I was Evan friends with White. him growing up. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Jason's got all the connections, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I, I got the Blue Jays. I, yeah, I got the Mariners. So we got, we're split here, huh? Split yeah. two and two. All right. I, and I, also, I I did have the Blue Jays as my preseason World Series pick. Just just put them. Did put you that really? Out there. I did. Yes, I had it. Right. So we actually all four of us had a matchup of the Dodgers and the Blue Jays. We did, right? Yeah. Me, hey, wow. I think it was me and Mike picked the Blue Jays, or me and Maca, and then I know Max picked the Dodgers. I picked the Dodgers, yeah. And then one of them picked one. one and we know how much that pains me to say that too. <laughs> um, actually it was Mac that picked Toronto, Toronto. I'm, I'm excited for Seattle Toronto because again it's the Mariners and their drought and that story versus the entire country of fucking Canada <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know what I mean that's gonna get that's gonna get cool um, yeah. and now for the real fun one which I know Jason's been been itching for the Cleveland not Indians the Guardians, the <laughs> Cleveland Guardians, against against the Tampa Bay Rays in Cleveland. Oh yeah, um, so they don't have to deal with the catwalk. Um, you know what, Jason? I'll let you. I'll let you take this one. Where to start? Besides, <laughs> uh, almost, uh, I, I am never confident in my life. Ever confident going into these games. In any sport, every Bengals game I've ever been to, I'm like, oh, Bengals should lose this. Every Blue Jackets game I've ever been to, Blue Jackets should lose this. Every Cavs game, Cavs should lose this. And in the past, every Guardians game, except for the World Series, I was very confident. Which uh, is so Ohio, it hurts. It is. Ohio State, every game, that I expect to win. Actually, Ohio State, I expect to win every game. I am more confident in the Guardians winning this series than any other sporting event I have ever watched or attended in my life. Look up and down each roster. Look at each pitching staff. I saw rankings on the pitching staffs earlier from MLB themselves, and I was disgusted that they put the Guardians at fourth. Are you kidding me? 
Shane Bieber is going off in game one. Game two is going to be, oh man, Quattro I know is game three. Game two is probably Tristan McKenzie. He's had a hell of a year. He's been fantastic. There is no reason why the Guardians should lose this game. If the Guardians are leading any of the games going into the eighth inning, you just put Classe in there and it's over. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, he, he, he had the, the most saves in baseball this year. Yeah. He was incredible. Class is incredible. Karen Chack's incredible. They DFA'd Brian Shaw, so there's no way we can lose now. You DFA <laughs> Brian Shaw, and the only problem on the entire roster is now gone outside of the fact that Owen Miller really can't play first base. Not good defensively. Great hitter. Terrible defensively. Josh Naylor at first. They called up all the kids. Josh Naylor's brother is actually the backup catcher right now. Yeah, you have both. Austin Head. You have Austin Hedges, you, the best second baseman in baseball right now. Andres Jimenez. How does You're that welcome. feel, Max? Thank you. No, Andres also, hey, 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 don't throw that in my face. I told you the kid's gonna be legit. Don't Ahmed throw that in my face. Oh, thank you to the Mets and the greatest player in all of baseball right now, Jose J Ram the Goat Ramirez. Back to back, I think AL MVP runner up the last <laughs> two seasons, and I think that Shane Bieber should win the AL So Young. I'm biased. Um, <laughs> Give me Verlander. Come on, man. up and down the roster. This is such a good team. And who the hell did the Rays even have? I feel like they don't even have half their World Series roster from 2020 anymore. Well, well hang on a second. That's Here's what the they the Rays. Did. That's right. It's the Rays. That's the past. That's all in the past now. What did you expect? Oh, that's, that's okay. I say this in football all the time because they piss me off to no end. The Pittsburgh Steelers, no matter how much roster turnover, how bad their offseason is, no matter what happens, Jason, they could Jason, lose Jason, half- Trent. Tread lightly, the Steelers fan. I'm treading lightly, but <laughs> he's going to like what I'm going to have to say. All right, all right. He's going to like what I have to say. No matter what happens, the Pittsburgh Steelers are always going to be good. They could have the worst offseason ever, lose every player. They could play a team of college kids, and they'll still win 10 games a year. And it's ridiculous. Right, it's the highlight of my year. And it's ridiculous. You're welcome. Um, it's, except for this year, they're one and three. But, yeah, but we got Kenny the coming. The point out, so. is Dad, the man. Rays do this all the time, but that's all in the past. That's all in the past. And this Guardians team, this Guardians team, I think the average age was like 24, 25. It's the youngest team in baseball. There's no reason why these Guardiac kids can't just obliterate Guardiac the race in two games. Kids. Obliterate the race in two games, and you're headed to Yankee Stadium. And the Guardians have been the hottest team in baseball. And I don't want to hear it because in 2017, the Cleveland Indians at the time, the Guardians now, Won 22 straight games in a row at the end of the year. Lost that 23rd game. That was Jay Bruce, right? Jay Bruce is yep. the one who yep. ended up continuing it. Yes. Yep. You're welcome. And then they went cold for two weeks, went into the playoffs, and just got obliterated. Um, actually, they got reverse swept by the Yankees that year. This is different. This is a team that just started peaking two weeks ago. And they've been on fire. I think I can't remember exactly how many losses they've had since they've had like one loss, two losses every four or five weeks. What did they finish with? 92 wins? 92 wins. Oh, that's what I thought. And Dude, this is and, a roster that's going to be together for six years. And, and to <laughs> also, also think, right? The Guardians were chasing for pretty much the entire season at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Yeah. So un- until what August, the middle middle of August, right? Yeah, they it was mid August when the in, Twins in that, dropped when they, out. When they swept the Twins, they took yes. over and they never let go. Exactly. And then they played them again, like two weeks later, and they swept them and again. Swept them again. Swept and that's the White when you Sox. knew Guardians are taking it. Yeah, you know? wrapped it up early. How it should be. <laughs> this this is a good team. This is a really good team. And everyone over the offseason was like, "There's no chance." They're like, "Oh." They're gonna they're gonna finish last in the division, and then all of a sudden you have Rookie of the Year, AL Rookie of the Year, Stephen Kwan. I'm manifesting it. He is going to win Rookie of the Year. I don't care about Julio Rodriguez. I really <laughs> don't care. First half of the year player. Uh, I can't remember who. Adley Rushman. 
Adley Rushman only ended up playing halfway through the season for the Orioles. Don't care. Wasn't impressive. Stephen Quad did it the entire year. year. The entire year from start to finish. Started out the year on fire. Stephen Kwan. Stephen Kwan should win the AL Rookie of the Year. He won't because small market, whatever. This team, I think, has a very easy and clear pathway to the ALCS. That goes through the, the New Yankees. York, right? The Bronx? Okay. Goes through the Bronx. So, before we get to that, hang on. Billy, I, I know we posted this today. Uh, we posted it previously, the, our, our picks. Oh, All I right. know I said, I know I said Tampa on our Instagram page, but I'm buying what Jason's fucking selling. <clears throat> I'm all in on the fucking Guardians right now. I am all in. The other thing about this, this isn't the Rays playing their usual like night game in the trop where they just have an easy advantage because they play there all the time. It's dreary, and no one's there. They have to come to Progressive Field in 40 degree weather. It's going to rain. During game one at noon, oh God. two games at noon and a potential oh, game noon? three. Yes. Both games are at noon, potential four o'clock game on Sunday. It's I'm in. I'm it, sold. I'm stalled. It's there. I just, I can't, I can't see the guardians losing. I really can't. I'm, I'm so hyped for this series. The, the only just... thing going against them will be the game two with Glass now and how he does. Because he is a very dominant pitcher. We saw what he's done in the, in the playoffs in the World Series, right? That's really the only thing, though. I mean, the Guardians are clearly – like, I like the Guardians' offense because it's very it's very similar to the Mets. And I like the way that this that this shift for away from – the you know from from the from the Braves and the Yankees offenses of just home runs and strikeouts, right? The Guardians are the best at this. It's just they, single they after have, single after single after single. They have single. the the highest uh, contact rate in the MLB at eighty fucking like eighty point nine percent or something What's like Stephen that. What's Stephen Kwan's? Because he's, he's the it's best ridiculous, contact hitter in baseball. Yeah. For the first, I I think he, hang on, hang on. he didn't you have can't a whiff say that because. He didn't because have a whiff for the first three weeks of the season. I don't care. What if he's the best contact hitter in baseball? Should have should have a batting title. No, Jeff McNeil has that, goes. by the way. David know, Fletcher. No, David Fletcher had no, I know, I know, uh, I know. had had the highest like his highest he is in history in a single no, season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what did he do? Oh, he sucks. He sucks. No, I, I, I'm just I'm just giving. You also you also you also want to draft him at the beginning of your fantasy. I'm just putting that out there, man. Listen, listen, listen. The <laughs> Guardians are. One of the best teams in baseball when it comes to just double after single after double Pass, after single. Just passing the bat. Next it's, guy. Next guy up. These two teams played each other last week. A week ago from tonight, Guardians took two out of three. And mm-hmm. the first one, if I recall correctly, it was six. It was an in extra innings. And they just couldn't catch up. And I can't find the left on base right now. But I do remember it being just absurd because I remember being pissed at that game. Mm. And it, it was a 6-5 final in 11 innings. So, so needless to say, Jason has the, the Guardians winning this one? Oh, Guardians in a sweep. I think. <laughs> Guardians in a sweep. I think it's the safest bet we've heard all day. <laughs> Fisher, what do you got on this one? I don't really watch these teams mainly. Um, <laughs> Nobody it's does, Ohio. dude. It's, Nobody it's, does. It's, 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 Two of those, more if you're not that. from here, you don't understand. Two of the two of the lowest uh, outside viewership, right? Yeah. Um, I'll th- I'll hop on your bandwagon, buddy. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll 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 be a guardian. I'll hop on the guardians, but on bandwagon. guard, <laughs> on guard, guardia kids, baby. Are either have either of those taken off? The Guardia, 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 Kid. Guardia kids okay, is an official right. nickname. Guardia all kids because right. they're all young. Guardia kids is official. Go Guards is official. I'm trying to think of the other one. They're trying to do Rock the Red right now for the playoffs, which... Gang of Guards. That would be a good one. But, it's but funny the Phillies because... Have Red October? So they the have, Red have Red October, October, which they didn't even start that. The Reds started that on Twitter back in 2012. Oh so you oh could go back. Or it's, it's, it was Hunt for Reds October is what they I, That one, I like that. Good marketing. Great marketing. But, um, so the Phillies have Red October... The Guardians have rocked the red for the land, baby. And the Mets, uh, hang on, the, the Mets have the most 
on brand thing I've ever seen. These these Mets. These, these Mets. Mets. You could drop an F bomb right in the middle. These fucking these Mets. These fucking Mets. <laughs> <laughs> the the marketing there is perfect for the Mets, by the way. Oh. For the um, land, baby. For the land. So so Fisher, you, you you you're sold on you you you're drinking the Kool Aid here that Jason is giving you. <laughs> I'm going to be dying with you, boys. <laughs> Billy, what do you got, man? I got. Oh, fuck you think I got? I obviously got the fucking Guardians, the Indians, my homeboys from day one. I've fucking loved the Indians since like 2013 or 14, I want to say. Since I Major just, League. Since, since the days of his Drupal <laughs> since Cabrera. Major League. Oh, I, I forgot to get on. into Ass that. Man. I forgot to get into that spiel. This is a revenge game for 2013. Oh, as Drupal Cabrera is, is he still on the raise? Because this is a revenge <laughs> game on him for bad grounding yeah. into a double play with bases loaded in 2013 to lose us the wild card game. Damn, he should have been a Yankee. Never been more pissed in my life. Michael Brantley was pissed. Jason Kipnis was pissed. The entire roster hated his Drupal Cabrera. I hate his Drupal Cabrera for this reason. This is a revenge game. A I, revenge I, game for 2013. I'll tell you this much. I didn't expect to hear a Jason Kipnis name drop ever hey, again. Hey, I love Jason Kipnis. His jersey's in that closet right there. <laughs> hey, listen, I'll tell you something off, off the record later about that. But uh, I mean, right. you already know it probably. But um, it's about a mutual friend of ours. Um. Oh, I, yeah, I, I know exactly yeah, what you're yeah, talking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, shit, man. I I picked the Rays initially, but you you're making me drink the fucking Kool Aid, bro. You're making me drink the Kool Aid. I am. I'm a big listen. I like Tristan McKenzie. I I think what he's done this year, he's turned the corner and he's he's starting to establish himself as a legitimate number two, probably an ace somewhere else when the time comes. What'd you just? I, Somewhere else, see... somewhere else. Listen, he's not well, leaving. It's Cleveland. Everybody leaves. That's not um, true. We just got our new owner. Five year pathway to a new owner. Oh, Ramirez it's, never it's, left. Miles Straw, who's, who's, uh, David Blitzer. Wait, wait. David Blitzer, owner of the Sixers and uh, Devils. Sixers, right? Yeah. He's the yep. new owner, and he's willing to pay money. Place. Willing to pay the money. Listen, can he buy out? Can he buy out Dolan from from the Knicks too? He's and buying out one Dolan. He's there, bought, but... buying out uh Paul Dolan. Yeah, I know it's a conflict. Or not. Story. But, not Paul. Uh, yeah, Paul. Paul Dolan. Paul, That's ours. Yeah. You you guys James have uh, James. We have Paul. James yeah. and his fucking band. Anyway, um, I, first of all, I want to go back to something you said, and I don't know if if I heard you right. You said that the Guardians are going to beat the Yankees too. Oh yeah, you heard that right. Mm-hmm. You heard that right. I think we have to put Mac on suicide watch at this <laughs> point. Hey, think think about it. Think about it. In 2017, did anyone pick the Yankees who had rookie Aaron Judge, not a great roster at the start, to beat the Indians who had won 22 straight games and were red honest, hot up until going into the postseason? Sure know, I'm pretty sure I know a bunch of people who did. But that's because they're Yankee fans. <laughs> because, well, that and the AL Central can't win in the Bronx in the playoffs. Yeah. Well, that's just the twins. True. The twins can't win a game. The twins, when the twins have not won a they playoff even, game, they haven't even beaten the Yankees. In they like haven't won a playoff years. game since I think 1994, wasn't it? Or something crazy. I think the twins have not won a playoff game, I think, in two decades. Um, and, and they've had series. They definitely haven't in the 2000s. They have, they, like, exactly. they've played in series, like five games, seven game series, or whatever. Just I think five, five games. Yeah, yeah five <laughs> games because it was the DSs. Five game series, and they haven't won a single playoff game. Jesus, insane. Sucks to be the Twins. Couldn't be me. Go Guards. Well, you know what? Minnesota's a shitty state anyway. You know what should happen though? Minnesota Twins should go shop go off soapazon dot com and get some some baseball soap. They should stop being so fucking smelly. Um, time of year bundling up. You wanna you wanna be nice and clean for when when you take off the jackets, the the, the postseason jackets. You don't want to smell too much. You don't want to smell too bad. Go to soapazon.com, promo code tap T A P, fifteen percent off your order. It's subscription based or one time order. Soapazon.com promo code tap. Oh. How do you get that in there? 
there was no there was no other spot for me to put that stay, in. Stay, <laughs> we were rolling, boys. Stay nice and clean. Um, yeah, I, also, I like to stay clean. You know, um, I don't know about those 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 Philly rats though. Um, <laughs> K Matt rat. There it is. I, I, I had to make him get one in there. Um, anything else, boys? I'm excited. I'm so, so pumped for tomorrow. So they're excited. Billy, you and I are freaking nervous, low key. Uh, low key. <laughs> What's low key? My stomach That's hasn't true. been good so in they, weeks, man. <laughs> they're excited. We're freaking out. Oh, these fucking Mets. Um, Glass boys, half full. Great having you guys on. Dude, the glass is half spilled at the time. <laughs> Nah. Peter on the edge. We're, hey, we're, in Ohio, sometimes you don't even have a glass. So come on. <laughs> no, nah, we're 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 staying we're staying we're staying optimistic. Listen, we're staying really optimistic. Bare hands. So this this is the year. <laughs> oh man, we'll see especially I like the idea of of Philly's Mets NLCS. That'd be awesome. Winner plays the guards. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, it's been a pleasure having you guys on. Um, best of luck to all your teams. Not too much yeah. luck to Fisher's Phillies, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, um, for the first couple of rounds. Enough, <laughs> just enough just enough to beat the Braves. Um <laughs> and yeah, uh check out Matt Fisher on uh, and the boys on on the power play. Hockey season's just getting started soon. What do we got? Another five days? Um, um less Predators than that. and uh Sharks go to tomorrow. on on tomorrow. Is it Wait, tomorrow? It, yeah, uh, it's the seventh. So that's that is tomorrow. Yeah. That's tomorrow. Yeah. So Regular season has two games tomorrow. Wow. Then then they officially rest goes off on uh Tuesday. So Tuesday night, that's when the boys record. So you know it's gonna be an action packed uh, episode for the boys. Um Fisher, any any other things you wanna try and sell the fans to listen to on the power play? Um boys, we are all over the place. We have so much fun <laughs> on that power po- <laughs> on that podcast. Um I wanted to get one more story in um, my last game. So uh, Citizens Bank Park gives you the luxury that you are allowed to bring uh, a bag in with food and unopened food on a like city field or, you know, uh, that's weird. Yeah. Wherever in the uh, uh, river stadium, that's what it's called. River. No, great it's American, Earth. man. Or great American ballpark in Cincinnati, American, progressive right. field in Cleveland. Right. Okay. But uh, uh, last game I went to, uh, I went to Primo's Hoagies, got a fat turkey hoagie with chips, and uh, I was Up. sitting in there, uh, the Hero. nosebleeds, Hero. feeling good, Hero. eating a nice turkey hoagie. Hero. I, See, I that's wanted, how you know I just wanted you're to all share from that. different places. We have hoagie, we have Euro, and I would call it a sub. <laughs> in Ohio. It's, a, it's, it's a hero, okay? It's a hero. It's a hero. You, you, could it, also, you could also say man. sub here. But it is sandwich. Sandwich. It's, it's just a sandwich, sandwich, man. man. It is sandwich. Sandwich. We're not going to get into sandwich <laughs> politics, boys. <laughs> this is a baseball <laughs> podcast. The playoffs <laughs> are starting. But that was I'm good. nervous and excited. I'm ready oh, to go. So what? what is a Philly cheesesteak, then? Is that That's a hoagie? That's a sub. It's just a cheesesteak. People want to say it's <laughs> You a go food. to Penn Station. Go, go, it's a cheesesteak. It's literally bread, cheese, and meat. Isn't Three that a hero? Simple Oh. Ingredients. That's a hero. It's not, it's not a Philly cheesesteak. It's just a cheesesteak. So, what is a cheesesteak then? <laughs> a a hoagie? Oh, it's a sandwich. sandwich. Gotcha. All right. Love it. So, is a hot dog a sandwich then? All right. Have yeah. a good one, guys. <laughs> Luck to all your teams in the playoffs. Thank you. <laughs> Find me on Twitter. Yeah, just some, yeah, some go ahead. promos, boys. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. J Greenberg eleven J G R E E N B E R G one one. I'll link it down below. And then, as they say, in Northeast Ohio, nothing is given; everything's earned. <laughs> you work for what you have, and we're ready to accept the challenge. There you go. Go guards. I like that. There you go. Fisher, we any just, personal we, promos? We just made our first tweet to a mascot, and it was Bowie. The new <laughs> Seattle Kraken mascot, and he responded to us. So uh, we're next level. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, boys. there you go. Great time, have by all. Good luck to your teams. That's a wrap episode. I don't even know what number of take a pitch, Billy. 
Couldn't tell you. You'll find it's out when uh, when you read the description. So on on the power plays on the countdown to 99, we are approaching 93. All right. On the countdown to 99. <laughs> it's a wrap. Playoff baseball, best time of year. We're Go going. Guards. <laughs> Go Guards. It's Tito made. Yee, yee, yee.